I have a demo for you today of a tool that helps you split up a very large bare metal machine into lots of VMs very quickly in order to test Kubernetes at scale. And I'm going to first of all tell you a bit about it. All right. So here's what we're looking at doing taking Firecracker to run multiple VMs very quickly, lightweight VMs. Catch up to do an installation of Kubernetes, and obviously Kubernetes plus some other software if we get time. Um, open FAS in this case to install something, an operator, and have it create thousands of objects. Now, what are the challenges with testing Kubernetes at scale? Well, every node can run about 100 to 110 containers each. It sounds maybe like a lot, but if you have a machine with 128 gigs of RAM, you're potentially going to be wasting that if your workloads are quite small. Now, let's say you get a customer issue come in on your operator and it only happens at exactly 3000 pods. What are you going to need? You're going to need a 30 node cluster at least, probably more, because we're not counting only your pods here in that limit and your containers, but all the control plane software like Cilium, um, Istio, uh, Cert Manager, you you know, you name it, it's all taking up that limit. So if we were, we were modest and we did an M5 large, okay, with a load balancer, it's about 1.2K per month to set that up. It's going to be very, very slow to provision that. An EKS cluster is slow enough as it is to create using cloud formation. There's a lot of checks that have to happen. This is really something that should be created quickly and then destroyed, okay without an ongoing cost. Quark or Kubernetes without Kubler is actually a very interesting open source project that simulates an API server so that you can go create um, lots of objects, but you can't use them. You can't do any end to end testing because there aren't any pods created. But it, it, you know, it may fit your needs. So I think bare metal is a good fit here. The Ampere dev platform that I have behind me um, is a demonstrator unit. They usually cost 2.6 to 3.1 uh, thousand dollars, but that is a one off cost. You then own it. So that's two months of those AWS fees, and you have the machine in your hands. Um, now that is ARM based, but most software now, from OpenFAS to Cert Manager to Istio to Flux to Flagger, you name it, is multi arch and you don't have to worry like you had to do uh, several years ago. You can even mix and match different kinds of servers, uh, x86 if you like. So the Q80, if you don't want to make a purchase, is available for 200 euros per month on Hetzner or Equinix Metal have it per hour. Now I've got a Ryzen desktop in front of me with 32 threads, 128 gigs of RAM, so you could see how I could potentially run 30 um, VMs there with a single core each or over commit a bit and maybe do 16 with with two cores etc you can kind of figure out the right balance so how this will all work is I've created a slicer tool this is based upon the code of actuated actuated runs github actions and GitLab CI securely isolated for continuous integration the same code has been used to create many VMs with a one second boot time Okay, and so what you're going to end up is with having systemd and sshd installed and that's it. There's no Kubernetes automation in that side of it. And then an SSH key that you've configured will be already set up on that host. Ketchup is a tool that I wrote several years ago and that installs a HA Kubernetes cluster for you over SSH. So prepare the VMs of SSH, Ketchup then does the rest. Is it very quick um, but to make it practical I've added a new command called plan which will generate all the ketchup commands to install the original server um, the initial server additional servers and then workers so to have a look at what this looks like I'm actually in the Ampere machine here now there's my my processors and there's my free RAM now if I have a look at this config file I've written I've got a uh, host group where 
each VM um, is going to get four gigs of RAM and four vCPU. All right, there's going to be 16 of them. As I start up the program, we pull the image, and then this is literally the booted VMs. They're actually booted. Now, I tried doing this with multipass, and it was two or more minutes per machine. Actually, I don't have um, my SSH key on there, so if I do it from this machine instead, assuming I have a route over there. There we go. And the, the user is Ubuntu. I'm in, we can look at, remember, mproc. We can look at how much RAM is there, disk space, and then um, we could have a look at what architectures is an ARM machine, right? So now what I want to do is I want to go back in there and just run a curl to localhost. And again, this is something that a tool like Multipass will not give you. And this is now outputted all of the host names and IP addresses. This is where Ketchup comes in. And what we'll do is create a devices file, devices JSON, okay. And then I'm going to run the plan command. This is going to save a cube config on my machine. Um, because I can run it from here because those IP addresses are all routable now because I added a route and here is my bootstrap file so we install the primary server initializing cluster two additional servers to make it HA and then all of the workers which are all you know they're being installed at the same time that is possible once the, the main server is up And that is the output from Ketchup. It's actually going ahead right now. So in a new window, <clears throat> we can export our cube config. And as soon as it has started up, we can start to get the nodes and watch them. So the first one is online. All these others are now joining very, very quickly. We'll have them all there. So at the same time then, I said one of the things we wanted to do was do some scale testing. So here we have um, a, a quick way of installing the OpenFast Helm chart of OpenFast standard, which will allow us to scale a bit higher than the community version. And if we do again an export for our cube config, just double check we're not in the wrong cluster and run this pro command. This is going to install OpenFAS. There we are. So again, multi-arch containers. Three replicas of our gateway. So we're in HA mode, autoscaler, etc. Everything's in there ready. Just check our pods are up. Yep, everything is now running. So the fun bit is that our pod limit now is very, very high compared to, let's say, a three node cluster. And if we go over to the mass deploy tool that, that I wrote, this uses the OpenFAS API. Um, we're gonna take 10 workers and deploy a thousand functions. Now, what we may also want is to get the logs um, from the operator, just so that we can watch it as it goes and creates all these objects. So uh, this function is actually just gonna print out environmental variables. First things first, let's go get the password. Um, don't strictly need to, to do a login here. We'll port forward from the ARM machine. We'll do a login anyway. Um, looks like I'm on the wrong cluster. So important to get the right cube context. 
Right, let's log into that again. Perfect, okay, so nothing in there. Let's run the tool. And in this case, I actually do want port 8080. I've been playing with these ports. All right, so they're all getting created. And in the background, the operator is going like crazy. We're almost approaching 200 deployments and services that have been created. And this isn't the only way to create the function. So what's happening in the background is all of these um, requests have gone to the API to create a function. And the function custom resource is then operated on by the operator. So if we do a word count, 1001 lines, because there's one line for the summary. And then behind the scenes, if we look at our deployments, we'll see that they're slowly mounting up. And then we'll see pods getting created off the back of that. And so Kubernetes itself rate limits how quickly it will create pods. I can't remember the exact amount, whether it was something like three per second, um, but this is something you can look up online. Okay, and so the deployments are coming in, the pods are coming in. Now there's one other way to create functions, which is through the custom resource for OpenFAS. And if I was to go store, I like generate from store and put something like load info. <clears throat> this gives me the YAML that I can then apply into the cluster. Okay, and that is another thing that is going to get created through the operator. And here we are, it's being created. We've got all of our 1000 functions, 1001 deployments. What about pods? Pods are still mounting up. And actually, we may, we'll get a thousand because we've got enough nodes, but we couldn't get to 3000. And that is where you can actually just get multiple of these bare metal machines and you can go to very, very high numbers that way. All right. So that is the end of a demo. Let me know if this is something you think you could use. We'd be interested in hearing more about. You don't necessarily have to go to the scale that I'm doing here. You could just have something that gets your three to five node cluster very, very quickly and efficiently. And again, this will only work on Linux because it's Firecracker based. So yeah.